Good morning, YouTubers. So I wanted to talk to you guys today about our last three soil tests. I'm gonna connect them together and I'm gonna tell you how we're changing everything from our pH levels all the way to our soluble salts. Okay, so the four tests that we're gonna focus on today here at Starkey Formstead are going to be our pH, our organic matter, our carbon and nitrogen, and our soluble salts. The title of this video was, how can worm castings in rabbit urine change the pH of your soil? The reason we used rabbit urine, this is why we use it all the time. Rabbit urine can actually balance the pH in your soil. Exactly how, I don't know, but as I learn it, I will tell you guys. But as a provable fact, and right here, I'm putting the study from Africa that gave me that information. But rabbit urine will balance your pH for you in your soil. It will also cleanse your soil of soluble salts. It is not salt in your soil. What it actually is, are micronutrients, minerals, metals that have built up. So calcium, magnesium, iron, all of that built up to high, high, dangerously high levels in your soil. That is soluble salt. So the thing about both worm castings and rabbit urine is once they're in your soil, they will help to cleanse those high levels of soluble salts out of your soil. Because if you have high levels of soluble salt, and you can get that either from synthetic or organic fertilizers. So don't just think it's only synthetic commercialized fertilizers. You can actually raise those levels with organic fertilizers. All right, so once you get those high levels of soluble salts, your soil has trouble uptaking nutrients and it begins to poison your soil. Here at Storkey Farmstead, we had basically, guys, we're below the 0.4, which they consider not found. So in the spring of 22, we were at 0.16. In the fall of 22, we were at 0.12. And in the spring of 23, again, we were at 0.15. So we were perfect. As your soluble salt levels increase, your plants will have trouble extracting water from the soil. Why is that important? Well, if you're irrigating and you're noticing that you keep giving your plants water and water and water, yet your plants are basically looking like they're dying of thirst, it's because you may have very high levels of soluble salt. And the way that you correct that, rabbit urine, worm castings, both of those will get into your soil and help cleanse it. So this is why I push these two products so hard. You, you pretty much don't need anything else. You can't mess up with rabbit urine and worm castings. They are a cleanser, they're a pH balancer, they will flush soluble salts out of your soil. And let me explain something to you. If you garden in raised beds, if you use a high tunnel, if you put plastic mulch or barriers between the rainwater and the soil, you better get your soluble salt levels checked ASAP because there's a very good chance that yours is higher than normal because soluble salts have to be flushed from the soil. People who garden year round in high tunnels will flush their high tunnels once a year with high levels of water. They do that because they're attempting to remove the soluble salts that have built up in their soil. Now here's something I want you to think about. If your soluble salt levels are high and you're flushing it with water, where is, where is all that? Where are all those toxins going now into our waterways? You can actually over fertilize and poison everything around you. And I'm gonna be honest, backyard gardeners, we're the worst. We are literally the fertilizing kings and queens of the world, okay? Commercial farmers, big ag tends to have a very set schedule for how they do everything with chemicals. I will give them that. So they put exactly what they need and rarely do they put any extra. Backyard gardeners, we tend to be almost like, you know, 
making a brew in there. We're like throwing this in there and throwing that in there. And we just keep fertilizing, fertilizing without realizing that when it does rain and, and our soil is flushed, that's going into the nearest ditch, to the nearest pond, to the nearest canal, to the nearest river, and right down the great Mississippi, out into the Gulf to create an algae bloom. Just saying. Well, what they have found, guys, is that worm castings are a neutral seven, okay? So the greatest thing about worm castings are can reduce the acid forming carbons, all right? And they can increase the nitrogen in a form that is available for your plants. So the importance of that basically means that when you add worm castings to highly acidic or highly alkaline soils, the worm castings are gonna get in there. They're gonna balance the pH for you in an organic way that you're not gonna harm waterways, animals, or your soil microbes. They're gonna balance it and they're gonna convert whatever nitrogen is available in the soil to a form that your plants can uptake immediately. Now that is very important is you can add nitrogen, but if the soil can't convert it, your plants can't uptake it. 22, 4.9 on our pH. Fall of 2022, 5.2. Spring of 23, still a 5.2. But here's the thing. We had just come out of winter and we had a hard winter. So I'm expecting that when we do our fall of 23 soil test that we're gonna be closer to six. All right, so the next test we're gonna talk about we did here at Sorky Farm said was our organic matter. Now I am very excited about this. When I say organic matter levels, I'm talking about what's in the soil. So we start with a heavy mulch on top of the soil. As it breaks down and the worms pull it down into the soil, they can test to see how much organic matter is built up in the soil. We started with a 2.6 in the spring of 2022. That's not very good. In fact, that's almost non-existent. It was hard packed clay. It basically had no organic matter. In the fall of 2022, we had 4.3. Guys, we doubled it. We doubled it in six months by doing heavy mulches, trash hay, leaves, compost, worm castings, rabbit manure, all of that's organic matter. We threw all of that on top of the soil and as it broke down, we didn't till, the worms came up and grabbed it. They pulled it back down into the soil and we almost doubled it in six months. Well, for the spring of 2023, we're at a 4.9. Guys, I'm tickled pink. The more organic matter that's found in my soil, the more food for the microbes, which means I'm going to have a higher level of microbes in my soil, bacteria, fungi, all those things need organic matter to eat. So it's a very important test to have done. The last one we're gonna talk about is our carbon to nitrogen ratio. Now for your carbon to nitrogen, nitrogen ratio, Ideal is 10 to one, all right? That basically means crop residue decomposition that's found in the soil and it helps with crop nutrient cycling. So your plants need to have a balanced carbon to nitrogen ratio in the soil so they can uptake nutrients. Well, Starkey Formstead was at a 9.64 in the spring of 2022. In the fall, of 22, we were at a 10.1. In the spring of 23, we were at a 10.4. That is phenomenal. Now, most soils are sitting at a 20 to one carbon nitrogen ratio. Let me give them a little cheat card right here. And basically that means when you're at a 20 to one, your soil is going to be a bit acidic, okay? It also means that your nitrogen is unavailable to plants. Your soil can become acidic, all right? So how do you correct organic matter, soil pH, carbon to nitrogen ratio, and soluble salt levels in your soil? How, guys? We just talked about it. Worm castings and rabbit urine. That's it. That's it. That's the only two products that you need. And both of those can be made in your backyard in your 
shop, in your garage, in your garden. So stop buying all those expensive commercial products to correct these four issues in your soil. You can do it with worm castings and rabbit urine. Thank you so much for rowing in our boat, cheering us on. We appreciate it. We're working hard. We, we really want to make a difference and we want to prove that the methods that we're using can correct the soil without a lot of expensive inputs and crazy machinery. Like we're doing this guys, we're doing it and you're doing it with us and we are so thankful for you because without you, I wouldn't have anybody to share it with. Nobody else gets quite as excited about my soil test as you guys, like my dad does. Steven's just like, whatever, you know? But I'm excited. I mean, this is proving everything I've been telling you guys for 14 months. This is my proof. This right here. So, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to know what lab we're using, it's Regen Ag. Okay? Um, we literally do about 70 different soil tests. But I picked the four that I felt like the average gardener needed to be concerned with. These four soil tests we just talked about can be the make it or break it in your garden. I know people are going to tell you, go get a carbon, a nitrogen, a potassium, go, go get all this. All those mean nothing if you don't have enough organic matter in your soil, if your pH is wrong, if your salt, your soluble salt levels are too high and your carbon to nitrogen ratio is off. None of those other tests are going to matter, and I just told you why. Your soil, A, is not going to be able to uptake the nutrients. B, it's not going to be able to convert it over. C, it's going to be, um, you're going to have too much disease killing your pet, your plants, right? Like, disease is going to wipe you out. And D, basically, your soil is going to be just one big hard rock, and nothing's going to grow in it. So get out there today. Start your own worm bins. Get you some rabbits. God bless you. Thank you for watching Starkey Formstead.